Sometimes a simple effect doesn't work out to be so simple. Take this one that I did for my other channel recently. It was a lot more complicated than I thought it would be and I figured it out so I want to show you. So welcome back to Creator Reality my friend. Today we're going to combine the planar tracker and the transform node that I showed up here in this video and we're going to get a neat effect to work. So let's jump into DaVinci Resolve and take a look at what we're working with. Here we are in our timeline and I've got my lady holding a laptop and then if we disable that, you can see I've got some GoPro footage. This is what I used in the actual video. I've got the finished clip over here. That's just a slick effect. There's a lot of little things going on in here that were not plainly obvious to me at the start, but quickly became so. So let's re-enable that with our D key. And you can see, first off, we have a blank space over here. So what we need to do is take our first clip and notice my playhead is sitting right on the frame where she pushes the space bar to hit play. So what we need to do is we need to pause the video prior to that, hence the blank space. So we're gonna hold Alt and drag our first clip up and over. And with our playhead at the start of the clip, we're gonna right click, choose change clip speed. It brings up this screen. We're just gonna click freeze frame, click change, and it's done. Now we're gonna shorten it to fit, drag it down, and now we're good. The next step is to select our three clips here because we need them all as one. We're gonna select them, right click, and say create compound clip. Doesn't matter what it's called, there it is. Now we can select both of these, right click and say new fusion clip. That creates our fusion clip. We can right click and say open in fusion page and it brings us here. First thing we wanna do is click on media in two, press the one key. That's our base clip. So we're gonna rename that with the F2 key. We're gonna call it laptop. Then we're gonna do the same thing for media in one. We know that is our inlay. So we're gonna press F2 and type in inlay. That'll keep things clear for now, right? We can get rid of the merge and then we'll disconnect inlay and connect laptop because we want that to be the base layer. With laptop selected, press shift spacebar, type in transform. Now, you can see we've got a little bit of the alpha there because this clip doesn't fit our resolution here. So we're going to bring up our size just a little bit. That should be good. Now we need a planar tracker. So we're going to select transform one, shift spacebar, planar tracker. There it is. Click add. Now this one's interesting because you can't just track the screen because at some point she brings her hand over it. So what we need to do is go to about frame 80 and we're going to drag with our middle mouse wheel and then control mouse wheel to zoom in. And now we're zoomed in, it'll be easier to draw our map. We know that her hand goes around a little bit of the screen, but what we want to pay attention to is high contrast areas like MacBook Pro there and the corners there and there. So what we do is planar tracker one is selected. We change tracker to point hybrid area and we're gonna click set. And then we're gonna draw around the laptop a little bit here. And we're gonna make sure that we miss her hand by a good margin. And then we're going to track back. And you can see DaVinci Resolve has some pixels already selected that it tracked. We click go, track forward again. And it's okay if it wobbles just a little bit, it's not gonna be plainly obvious once the effect is done. Now that it's fully tracked, we'll just double check and make sure that it looks okay. I think it's gonna be fine. Then we need to take our operation mode and change it to corner pin, control mouse wheel, zoom out, and we're going to drag our corners pretty much in place, but then we're gonna control mouse wheel to zoom back in. And we're gonna bring our edges of our corner pin way outside. And we'll, we do this for a specific reason. I'll show you in just a minute. So once it's about set up right, we're good. Now, if you just drag your inlay over, it looks kind of wonky, right? So we need to break that connection and we need to bring inlay up. And then with inlay selected, shift spacebar again, we're gonna add a transform, but we're gonna add our hidden transform like I showed in that other video. And then we're gonna click in blank space, add another transform, the special one. And we're gonna drag from the output of inlay to the input of transform three. So this gives us two copies of our inlay. And both of these we wanna to set to interactive canvas. And for the top one, 
We're gonna make this the top screen. Now we really need to do a merge. So we're gonna connect these two, which will create a merge. And then we can drag this into our corner pin on our planar tracker. Now that we have that all set up, it looks weird. The aspect ratio is wrong and it you know doesn't fit. So we're gonna click in blank space, shift space bar. We're gonna use a delta key here. So type in delta, and then we're gonna drag the output of transform one into the delta key here. Press one to bring it up in the left viewer, drag your eyedropper over, it grabs the green screen and masks it out. If I disable Delta Keyer and zoom in, you can see the green from the laptop screen spilled out onto the keyboard. So that's what really makes this effect quite tricky. So we're gonna re-enable Delta Keyer, that's good. And we're gonna drag from the output of the Delta Keyer up to the output of Planar Tracker 1, which creates Merge 2. Now you can see it looks okay, but if I disable merge, you can see this video is still the wrong aspect ratio. So to fix that, we'll re-enable merge two and we're going to take our merge one. Let's make some room. All right, let's make some room. Make a hole, people. So with merge one selected, yellow is the background, green is the foreground. We want to swap those. Hold control, press T. Now they've swapped positions. And with transform two selected, and we'll press the one key, you can see this is what it's gonna look like. So we wanna make sure these are both fit. And then we're gonna play with this canvas until it looks right. And if you drag it around, you can see in the right viewer, if I zoom in, you can see that it looks a little wonky. And once it takes up about the whole laptop screen, that's the top. Now you can see that this bottom area matches that. It doesn't reverse it, it's not flipped. So we're gonna click on transform three, which is our other copy of the video, press one, and then we're gonna drag the top center section all the way down until it's beneath the frame. Grab your center section and drag it up. And if you drag it up, it you know it gets wonky. You see the green and everything. So now you have to play with it a little bit. We can control mouse wheel, zoom out, and play around with this until it fits our screen. And then we wanna stretch the corners out to match. If we go back and zoom this guy out, we can see just how far off everything is. But then we're gonna tinker with it. You might have to zoom way in until it's just barely visible to see what's going on. So if you drag these around too much, you see it gets kind of wonky, but here's a trick for that. You can hold control and select both transforms. So you see where they overlap, right? So we can control mouse wheel zoom in and make sure that transform three, which is selected here, comes down to bottom of our laptop, just takes up some space there. And it doesn't have to be perfect, but you do want it to look kind of right, right? And once you're happy with how that looks, then we need to add our lens blur to really sell this effect. So since this is the bottom one, we'll make sure it's selected, shift space bar, add a lens blur. We'll change the blur from four to 2.5, and now it's blurry and it's in the bottom. And while we wait for DaVinci Resolve to render this so we can preview it in the edit tab, go ahead and boop the like button if you like what you've seen so far. Show me you, show me you care, right? Anyway, the big caveat to this is after the last merge, I originally tried to add a transform node in there. Don't do that. We're gonna do a little bit of transforming in the edit tab. Don't do it in Fusion. It really made things go wonky. I don't know why but I couldn't fix it and it screwed up the whole thing and I had to redo it. So now that DaVinci's done, I looked over, yeah, it's done. Let's go take a look. Here we are back in the edit page and we wanna play through this. Now you can see it's perfectly green screened. When I hit play, it goes through and look at that. Oh, that's so slick. It just looks nice, doesn't it? And you can tweak some of it a little bit so it looks a little bit better and maybe I stretched it out too far, but it looks good, right? Now let's do a little bit of secret sauce. So for the last bit of secret sauce, with our fusion clip selected and our playhead at the first frame, we're gonna go ahead and click on the keyframe icons next to zoom and position. We're gonna go to about where she clicks on the play button on the laptop, click on zoom, type in two, and then drag Y up to about here. If you drag too far, you'll go off frame. And then once you have that set, right click on the zoom keyframe, select ease in, and you're done. Now that Resolve has finished the render cache, we can play it back. And you can see that it's perfectly tracked to the laptop, the zoom in is slick, the reflection is there, it all works beautifully.
And that's what I'm calling the laptop effect. Did you like it? Can you use it in your video production? And hey, if you watch this far in a video, why not leave it a like and a subscription? Yeah, let's do all the fun YouTube stuff. Or not, you could just go check out this video YouTube thinks you'll like. It's one of mine. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.